Hey guys, how are you? Francis here, and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to speak to Dave Morgan. How are you, Dave? Um, Dave's been around and in the precious metal scene for absolute ages. He's a stalwart, I would say. Um, I didn't know he was as tall a, a man as when I first saw him. He's a giant. Um, but it's great to be speaking to you, Dave. Thanks very much, and I'd love to pick your brain on precious metals. How are you doing? Good work. So, uh, we've got precious metal bullet in our community. How, how do we get around, um, we had a small pre-chat about this just before the interview, how do we get around A, you need, it's a lot of weight, if you want to physically hold it and uh, take ownership and have it under your own control. What's your best advice for actual physical silver warning? Tough question, because there is a one size fits all the answer. But you know, everyone complains about the bulk of silver, but it's relative to what? Yeah. If it's relative to gold, So it's like 80 times more bulk because the value of bulk is 80 times bigger But if you look at us, iPhone 6, yeah. and you had that in your silver, that bulk, yeah. you look at a little a kilo of silver, it's yeah. So 30, 32 ounces of time, you have to be able to pull in a couple of 16s, you have to be able to about 500 dollars. In that ball, right there. Now you tell me anything that you own that has that small a volume, other than a cell phone, that has five hundred dollars worth of value. Now I'm going to exclude their points mark because you know Rembrandt is going to be millions. <laughs> but we talk about common items. So is it really ball? Take a laptop yeah. made out of pure silver. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. If I have a Lamborghini that's right there. And a Lamborghini that's the identical model of it, that's pure silver. Which one's worth more? Oh yeah, good point, good point. And it's not like you have to wear it around your neck every day, is it? No. Um, it just has to be occasionally portable. But I want to also back up, and this is like giving the answer that no one really knows, like how much is enough. Yeah. Well, the answer is generally 10%, okay? Yeah. So I've always advocated 10, 20% of them. Yeah. But let's just take the average person out there that's worried about a financial collapse. Yeah. If you go and get 200 ounces of silver, so kilos 30, so seven of those phones, and that's all the silver you have, you've got seven of those phones, that's not a really big pile. No. It? But if it goes back to the value you've had during the Roman times, that will last you for six months to years with the purchase of power. Yeah. Now remember, I said if and only if it went back to the purchase of power that it had during the Roman Empire. But I don't think that's... Uh, Fly away dream. I believe that an economic collapse scenario or a down and out kind of scenario could be gained that type of purchase. I'd even go further. Because of the nature and emotionality of markets, that which is undershot will overshoot to the upside as well. Probably before settling down a little bit, maybe in the area you, you're saying. So that's a, that's a good point. So the, I suppose the portability, it's a, it's a concept of value is essence, um, what you're well, saying. Well, let's take it one more step. I mean, this is a thought experiment no one ever talks about. But let's just say that silver was as valuable as gold. Yeah. Is it too bulky then? No. No, you carry no, a couple no, of houses around. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's all relative to the value and perceived value. Yeah. So that's the bulk of it. So now the patience and the timing question that will always come up to you. So we've had actually a bear market now after an overshoot. Silver almost made fifty dollars um, when gold was going uh, nineteen hundreds, uh, and since then it's been a bear. And everyone's asking when, 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 and there's the theories, or, you know, the suppression and everything um, about that. Since that period, we've actually seen extremities in the silver gold ratio. You know, we've been hitting them near the nineties and all of that. Which brought us to the, the topic of, I thought was really interesting that you, you uh, refreshed me on the stats. Is that at one point when I was following it more closely, because the cryptos has been a distraction from precious metals, and that's an interesting point to follow also, but that, we'll come back to that one later. Um, we, were, we, we only had 500 million ounces at our low point uh, above ground uh, silver. An investable form. Yeah, and now you mentioned to me that it's almost a 5x up. Yep. Um, to where we are today. So if we're talking supply and demand, because everybody knows the whole world's going to have smartphones and devices, there's four or five billion folk that have to come online that are all going to get a, a smartphone and there's going to be silver in there. There's the usual TVs and uh, the solar panels, etc., etc. And then the, the demand must be almost pretty strong growth. Um, and we don't have a primary miner either. That's all a secondary byproduct in most of the places. Why have we not... How did we accumulate 
And is, it, is that a glut? And is that a, one of the reasons why silver's maybe battling? Because, okay, the both precious metals have been low, but silver, of course, is the higher beta and it's been ex 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 extensionally further, more extremity, hence the ratio. So quite a long-winded question, but is it the supply? Yeah, well, you covered a lot, and I can answer the question. I'm just hopeful that I can do it in a manner that uh, yeah. is succinct and coherent and understandable. Yes. So I'm going to take it from basic market fundamentals. All markets move to the margin. Yep. The margin is the last bidder for the rim, the last bidder at an auto. Yeah. The last bidder at a cake sale. But if one that puts up their thing and says, I'll pay that price, and it's the yeah. highest price, yeah. gets the cake. Yeah. So we agree. Yeah, hopefully. Everybody. Yeah. All right. So the margin on the silver market is monetary, not industrial. Yes. So it's the person that wants it for wealth protection, speculation, speculation and wealth protection. You know, it's the in thing to do. There's a variety of reasons why people buy silver. Yeah. So now I'm going to backtrack. We won't know that the market's going to be We also know that silver is used in industry at a huge level. So we go back to the early 1990s, 35% of the demand of silver was industrial demand, and the above ground mining annual was about 550 million ounces a year. And day 60, roughly 60% of the market is industrial demand, and yes. the annual supply is about 850 million ounces a year. So what did I just say? I said that the overall industrial demand has gone from 35% to 60% yeah. in the last 15, yeah. 20 years. And the amount of mines activity got from 550 million to 850 million. Yeah. So that tells you we have an extreme increase in industrial demand for silver. Yeah. And yet the price on an inflation adjusted basis is probably as low as it's ever been. Yeah. So why is that? And the answer is simple, I already gave it to you, with margin. Yeah. At the margin, there's not demand. Not enough to, to move the price higher. Yeah. Now I'm going to backtrack even further, but this does add to the discussion. If you look at what happened in silver market, there was QE, as it is, which is a fancy term for quantitative easing means money. Okay, so most yeah. watching your show would know that. So QE was announced, and then a lot of things that people thought it was a one-time event, and it saved the system and yada yada yada. But then QE2 was announced. Anyone that thinks like me, and there aren't that many, but there's a lot in the monetary circles, said QE2. Well, there's one place to be when there is a highly inflationary environment. One place to be. Not anymore, but at that time, and that's silver. Yeah. So when QE2 was announced, the silver price was roughly $18 to $19. Yeah. And because of the announcement of more money printing, QE2, the price shot from 19 all the way up to 50 in, or close to 50, in a pair of all And as you would say, that was our monetary investor buyer. Not, that it was wasn't Apple buying their demand, silver for it wasn't Apple buying silver, <laughs> exactly. any of that stuff. Yeah. And what happened? Yeah. Well, they went to off. $50. Yeah. And why? Well, the answer is complex, but not necessarily so. Because everyone expected that inflationary situation to spill over in the mainstream, yeah. into the market. Yeah. into the average back pocket of you and me, and it didn't happen. Not all that pretty, which took place, went to liquefy the banks, banks. and it was dead money to the physical economy. Yeah. And once everyone woke up to that idea, that it was dead money to us, to the physical yeah. economy, it made no movement to change, yeah. it backed right down. But that's a problem then, because if we're going to have a similar cycle, if we listen to it, first the fear, you know, the deflation, the plunge, that's not necessarily good for precious metals. Last time we fell from 1,035 on the, the gold to about 681, if you remember, just at the outbreak of the, the problem. And then silver from 21 to 8, uh, around the same time, this was the 2008. Um, so first we drop, in essence, but then the solution which was the QVT, then led to the eventual uh, bull run. But then once the dawning of that realization is, hey, this is just getting housing back up so that the banks aren't bankrupt. It wasn't for the homeowners. They don't work for us. They work for the banks. They re reinflated it. How do we uh, how do we hold gold and silver in confidence that it's not going to turn out the same again? Because the solution is going to be print again, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's a very, it's a great question that needs to be answered. 
there's a very few times in monetary history where you're in a situation where you're going to find yourself, especially on a global basis. Of course, it's a psychological thing. Yeah, Mark, I, you know, I have an engineering degree, you're pretty good in math, scrutinized the SAT, blah, blah, blah. You're actually an engineer. Because I had to learn the hard way the markets to run on the numbers. I'm going to crush the numbers when we do it, of course. Yeah. But it really runs on psychology. Yeah. So what you're really saying, or the way I hear it, you can, I'm being a devil's advocate. No, I think it's a great question. Yeah. Is when does the psychological shift take place in a significant enough way that yeah. people would rather own a jar of peanut butter than a US dollar? Yeah. And when that takes place, that's when you see the metal take off and won't come back. Yeah. Well, once that psychology hits the market, yeah. that's when you will not be able to be able to it. That's when QE2 to infinity won't matter. Everyone will think on the game is rigged, it's not to work, and I don't want to own a dollar. Once that psychological bound is reached, you're done. Yeah. And that's when you have to have some. If I can cut in on that, you know, when it's uh, okay, it's the dollar that's collapsing. But we, what they've done is they've globally, as you mentioned, synchronized all larger nation states into the same corner. So the pound, the euro is as sick as the dog for the same reason. They've done the QE for the same reason. So actually, all fiat currencies relative to each other, you don't really have the dollar going to zero because against the pound, it's like two parachutes jumping out of the plane. They're both falling. It's now a price of relatively who's falling quicker. But there will always be some value between them. So where do we get out of that fiat comparison level and we actually get to the tangibles that there's the complete breakdown in the paper? Well, education but I call the bankers less vested to hope. Yeah. And it's exactly what you said. And if most of us are taught to believe that the pound sterling is different than the euro, which is different than the Australian yeah. dollar, which is different than the yen, and they all fluctuate with the currency markets, and it's a trillion dollar market every day. And that there is a difference. Yeah. When the reality, the truth of the matters, are all pretty pieces of paper with absolutely nothing. Yeah. But you don't need one half, one tenth, one percent to wake up to that. No. All you need is the market itself, whatever it's comprised of, to move enough money out of the dollar into gold to make a move that someone catches fire. In other words, that tipping point, that trigger point, that flock of birds flying in the sky, no one knows what the altar left at one time. Yeah, it's that moment. I can't tell you what it's going to be. And we didn't quite do enough in 2008 to uh, get enough of the pools to stampede, essentially, out of, uh, out, of, out, of, out of the corral or the slaughterhouse corral. Um, and, uh, I mean, that in itself is fascinating. I'm interested also in your take, just a slight sidebar, because this is really, really interesting, but maybe just to give you a breather on that point, whether, whether the next time will be big enough. I've got a company that does hosting, where you buy gold and silver. This, this one's called Bullion Vault, but there's many others like it. I don't know if you know the name. And they say, okay, you can have yours. And I went Singapore. We're like, I don't want to trust London. I don't want to trust New York. I don't want to trust... I'm going for one that I think will be the most legit financially the least probably closest to balancing his books, less likely to have done QE. The the one guy actually stood up and said, I've got a real problem with our currency. We're almost forced to do it because everybody else is doing it. Right. Otherwise it strangles us because it's it's kind of like everybody's in it you know, you're the one healthy guy in the leper colony and you need to stay married to your wife who's a leper. You know, everybody just has to then become the leper. Um, what do you think about um, the, the, the security and the counterparty risk if you do and I'm not mentioning that one company, I'm not asking for a company on them, but those kind of setups where they hold and they say it's, it's, it's um, I'm going to need you to help me with the phraseology, it's, it's serialized bars and it's not um, it's so so limited, it's, it's yeah, segregated. segregated and it's, uh, so there's no um, pooling and um, there's no hypothecation risk, etc. They allege anyway in terms of their T's and C's. Well, it's an end of the so yeah. it depends on who you're dealing with. I don't measure people necessarily by their net worth, but the point I'm making is that even in those scenarios, I suggest there's a grab and go situation where you could grab, you know, plate and platinum and gold, shove it in your jeans or your suit or whatever, and take off. And that's the yeah. absolute, absolute worst case scenario. Yeah. That could happen probably now. Yeah. But you have it. You'd rather have it not need it than yes. need it not have it, especially you got that kind of money that you can't grab it. Yeah. So there's that aspect. 
going up the chain, what you're talking about, is you're going to put it into storage at some facility. I suggest, depending on your network, you take three. One within your jurisdiction, one and two outside of your jurisdiction. Yeah, and you're going to have to bet that yourselves. I did a whole huge interview in a massive white paper with a friend of mine where I store some of my silver that is looking at, let's say, the dark side of the industry for most of the time. But I don't want to name names because some of these people entities that are not bad, wrong, or any of that, just when you get down to the legal print, what is available and what isn't, I want to know. And some of these things are not, let's say, what they're reported to be when you get down to the fine print, yeah, which is what I'm all about. So there's that trust risk you just can't mitigate against unless you're a first-rate lawyer, you've got excellent advice, and there's that worry that they give you cash settlements on diminished mega printed currency in the next leg down and uh, you can't even though some of them do say for a fee you can come and actually collect yeah. i'm assuming that that'll if, if we all end up collecting at the same time that could end up being embarrassing it's hard to get in the facility be it a bank a financial institution yeah. a private vault whatever with the first lock that says uh, no entry yeah no one's there yeah no, absolutely okay good so in sense of uh, supply will we continue to gain above ground supply Two, the, we're on 2.5 now. Or are, are you seeing that's a flatlining level? What's the what's the trend? Well, it's been flatlining to slightly down for the last three years. I see that continuing for probably a couple more years. But uh, my studies, which you know how serious I am, there actually are a couple of few lines that I know of yeah. well that have uh, uh, substantial amounts. So I'm pretty convinced people exist. Yeah. So 13% of the silver supplies was low in gold mines, so that's when that's coming down. Yeah. Um, the real thing though is really the mining technique. Whether you know, you're know you going to get more mining productivity, you're going to recycle more silver, all the things that surround the silver market. And institutional um, buying going to creep up continually? Well, that seems well, to be the trend. Yeah, the mid-60s yeah. maybe making sense. I mean, if you want to know the real truth of the matter, the main problem with silver is it's been demonetized. Yeah. If the people ran the system and not the bankers, it was the money of the people for the people and by the people. And we didn't go into you know the opium wars and everything else was taking place at the time of 1873. And the bankers coveted silver as much as they covered gold as they should because the bimetallic standard was far better than the gold only standard. Yeah. Then you would have silver as a monetary asset. And then you wouldn't think the price would be. Then you wouldn't think the ratio. Absolutely. You wouldn't have to count the whole very heavy coins to have quite a bit of money, right. a few meals in your right. pocket. Exactly. So that's the trouble from my perspective, from monetary history's perspective. But that doesn't change our reality. Our reality is that there's going silver money out there. And that's all the time. Coming back into the run up of silver, well, after silver peaked, it fell off, and people realized that this fiat money didn't really come into their back pockets, the only way in the banking system. A lot of people gave up. Yeah. And a lot of them, because most silver investors uh, are not that risky to take on risk. Most of them. So a lot of them took the you know three dollar silver that we sold for a twenty yeah. and moved into cryptos at the right time and watched their fortunes come back. Yeah. And so a lot of money moved. I'm convinced more money moved from from silver into cryptos than it moved from gold. Into right. And um, that a lot of well, it's risk profile. It's the higher beta, isn't exactly. it? And you don't get anything yeah. more wild uh, than the crypto markets exactly. in terms of volatility. Exactly. So long term, I'm still silver bull. Uh, it's always about perception, psychology, as we discussed, which is critical. Will it happen the next time? I don't know, but I actually think it will. I think we're at kind of near that tipping point. When? I don't know. What I do know is once that psychology is broken, you can't get it back. Now, and I digress a bit. It's kind of like the stampeding bulls. Once they're properly all on the charge, yeah. there's no stopping it. And I digress. It hopefully adds to the discussion. But I read, uh, the, uh, what is it called? Collapsed Complex Society. Yeah. And it goes through the, and this was said by somebody in the lecture hall a while back, but it's the Byzantine, the Mesopotamian, yeah. the Roman, yeah. the Greco, the Roman, you know, the whole, every major society or empire collapsed. And of course, there's much academics after every chapter was because of food, yeah. because of war, because of fire, because of, yeah. you know, weather, I think I already said that. And all these, we all made strong cases. A lot of them might say it was money, but not always. But, and I got through the book, and I wanted to have this epiphany, you know, I got it, you know. And I didn't get anything, you know, it was kind of upset. It was kind of a slug for me, and I'm yeah. a bit of an academic. 
And then it, it came to me about a week later and realized it doesn't matter if it's war or it's invasion, it's weather, it's earthquake, it's whatever. Because once it starts down, there's nothing can do back up. Yeah. And that again is my point of saying this whole thing to say it again. Yeah. Yeah. Once the psychology changes, that I know I don't want to work with this bomb. Because it's not going to be worth what it's printed on for a long time. Yeah. Or I don't want to hold you this dollar because this is going to buy me in two months when it buys me. Yeah. Once that's that calls, it only has to be a little spark. Once that spark in 1905, people will be running to the store using that as a metaphor. And once John, what are you doing? Francis, you're doing what? You're buying more silver? I thought you had a I can't get enough because everything else is going to happen. Yeah. And this is the problem with the banking space that they know. It. The biggest fear that they have is the truth to be let. Yeah, we don't want anyone to know that they can't have all the control. That's why they give us such pleasure, you might say, in controlling the market because it causes stability. And we all want stability. I'm not rooting for silver to go to the moon. If silver goes to the moon, I might be better off financially, but I might be able to buy my favorite restaurant or my favorite yeah. steak dinner. Or there's going to be a big dislocation. Yeah. I'm not rooting for that. I'm pretty happy with the status quo. The problem is it's built on a lie. And all lies fail, and this one's fail. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. When? That could be fail. Yeah. Two final questions, and then I must let you go. Um, first of all, we're, we're in a crypto conference, and there are people that are now talking about silver online and the blockchain. Um, how do you feel about that? And given the trusts and the counterparty interests and all of those things, when it's not in your hands, hot little hands, which is the safest thing, um, I'd rather take a risk of being mugged uh, at home or something like that than anything else rather. I'd be quiet, I won't tell anybody. What do you make of the blockchain option? Well, philosophically, I'm not that favorable to the Your old school crypto like because, you know, a fiat system is based on this is worth something because I tell you to and you can have to pay your taxes or, yeah. or the court rules. Yeah. But, so I like things that are value. Yes. But, there's a marriage between the crypto space and hard assets, and not just gold and silver. They're doing it for tea. Company. They're doing it for trees. They're doing it for uh, yeah. DRC's doing it for uh, cobalt. I mean, so there's a lot of hard assets to that. I'm pretty favorable to that. Yeah. As far as it's always a trust issue. You know, that who the distributed ledgers have hands it's in, and it's not centralized. I get that. But still, there's always a trust in that. So you're really careful. Yeah. I think that uh, like anything, especially the new idea, you have your winners and losers. I mean, when the automobile industry starts, about 1,300 automobile manufacturers. I just learned this recently. Yes, it's only like three, four yeah, that actually came out. Yeah. So safe thing. You gotta be careful. I've always taught the same thing. You know, hold your your net position that you can dash with. You know, yeah. and that's an individual choice. Yeah. After that is secured. Then you can move on to storage facilities, and I think the crypto space is one to investigate at least because uh, it's pretty cool to be able to spend money, you know, with your phone or an electronic device anywhere in the world. Yeah, and it's only really between you and yourself if you're spending silver or you're spending fiat. Yeah, in fact, there's a debit card that I, a friend of mine, started. It's been around for like four or five years now, yeah. and uh, it is a cash and. Uh, and uh, monetary metal, and we're, he's putting crypto. So that card right there, I could debit my silver right out of it. No one knows the difference because it goes through the system, yeah. the banking system, as a debit card, which it is. What they don't know, sorry for me, <laughs> is that I could debit out precious metals. Yeah, this is pretty cool. So a lot of people say, "Well, you do your silver." Answers. Uh, all my kids are getting profit. <laughs> but I'm certainly going to spend some of it on the way. You know? Yeah, indeed, indeed. Why not? A million dollars, 10%, you say, in precious metals, more specifically silver, I think, is almost silver 100%. Gold, right? Are you yeah. okay with a bit of gold? Oh, um, absolutely. So 10%. You can't, you know, it's an argument of the volume. Yeah. Yeah. That much gold, that yeah. kilo of gold, you really got to You do all right. You'll do all right. So you've got 10%. Of the 10%, so that's $100,000 of the original million, how much will you go to silver and gold? I wrote about it, it's in how to use the mortgage with code. You have to have a member of page number. It depends on your age and your risk tolerance. But I'd say for most people that are my age or more. 50 plus? Yeah, if you're 60 or older, 50 50 probably, or maybe even 60 or 40, you're giving gold. Why? It's more stable. That's establishment. Gold is establishment. Yeah. I mean, even though the 
talking heads on the financial channels will tell you. Yeah. At subconscious level, they all know it. Yeah. Space full of gold is monetary asset. Yeah. They don't hold silver. Yeah. Yeah. And then of that split that is the silver, say it's 40% of your 50 plus, um, all physical or some no, of it? No, I break it all down. So this is my recommendation. That doesn't mean silver is one size fits all. So you can take the 10%. So that's 40, 60, 40, and of that, 50% of that is in it. Yeah. So the other, this is very, very conservative. The other 50% goes into the resource sector with about 50, 60% of the top tier cash grid and as money companies that make money no matter what the price of goods that we do. Those are the top stocks. Yeah. And then the next is the mid tier. Any favorites amongst those like you? Yeah, Kirkland Lake. Kirkland Lake. Kirkland Lake. Kirkland Lake. Kirkland Lake. Kirkland Lake. Franklin, Nevada. Franklin, Nevada, yeah. And then the uh, like bottom 10% you're going to use it as a speculation. And I am be doing something on my channel that would all be part of speculation. Yeah. Where do not, people find your channel? Let's just get that. The Morgan Report. The Morgan Report. Com. There's a free service. You have a weekly interviews like this. Yeah. And then there's the papers and you know, the stock books. And, let's say people can make the stuff. So maybe a good quality, but quite marginal. Ones that might go really well if they get a pump. Yeah, right. Everybody loves the spec ones. They, they can't help themselves. The one futures trade can make up for a lot of movements. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do a lot of trade, but I do on the premium service so that people see how I trade. Yeah. And I made that trade for $19. Yeah. So I actually watched the breakout and fed by the charts. So I got the 19 with. Yeah. And it went up to 26. That must so be I already had seven bucks, right? Yeah. And I love the position. Yeah. And then I got out of it. And then QE2 was in. So I knew the psychology, <laughs> the psychology, not the math, not the numbers, not the markets over the yeah. market. The fact that they I knew back the, at it. the fact that the psychology was QE2, and I knew yeah. what that meant. Yeah. And I knew what would happen. Yeah. So I got back in. Yeah. And we wrote it all the way up to 48. Because they made great store about this one sort of thing they were going to do. And it was almost like by the time they went for a second time, it's almost like the, you know, you're the full heroin addict now, aren't you? Um, and that, that had your lean in. So yeah, that was a great trade for you, obviously. I have people that cashed out on my say so. Yeah, they're right. Back to the market. Well, they're they're right. So great. They retired. They, they retired. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So you were pretty prominent names on the internet. I'm not at liberty to say No, no, are, good for them. Yeah. Excellent. Well, um, where can people find you? I think we've already said that. Um, yeah, the, my main channel is, or my main website is themorningreport.com. I have a YouTube channel, The Morning Report. I have a Twitter account called at 22 uh, I have a Facebook presence of some type, kind of mediocre. Yeah. Um, but mostly it it's like Twitter, <laughs> mostly it's uh, YouTube. Yeah. I do a lot of interviews, so the big thing is get on the free list. Yeah. And every time I do an interview like this, I just publish it to our followers, which is like 35,000 right. people. And One I final know. question before I let you go. <laughs> Why do the miners sell it so goddamn cheap if they are, or if so many people think it's manipulated and held down? Imagine you're, a, you're an engineer, you've got a great degree, and that takes a lot of effort. Imagine engineers were paid lower than, um, you know, people who clean toilets. You would just stop working at that. Why do they do it? Why don't they hoard? Why don't they hold out for a real pocket? Or are they part of the, what people think is the manipulation? Because that's one I've never been able to resolve. You know, if it's not good for business, I don't do it. <laughs> Why do they sell it low? Yeah, it's, it's all part of the system. Because in most cases, they, the miners, have to go to the banks to finance the loans. Yeah. So they're beholden to the banks. They, in some cases, to get the loan within yeah. the mine, have to get according to the banks. Yeah. And so it's basically a, a fiat bank run system. That's the reason. Now, most of them will tell you that they don't give a fig about silver, it's just commodity stuff, like et cetera. And a lot of them, I think, truly believe that. And if you believe that, you're just looking for your margin on your product. Yeah, but it's more than just the element of the ground is history's perspective. So that's the reason. It's so that, that, that would imply that if we got a, de a non-debt funded silver miner, you could have somebody who, if you didn't need to actually, well, you need to pay your workers, but essentially you could, they could stack and hoard and Absolutely. sell just enough to cover costs. So let's um, say there was a system like the low dot one, right? Yeah. And I'm an ambassador for it, I have money. Right. So I think so. Yeah. And that system is basically a sort of bank. Yeah. And it has synergy, in other words, yeah. it's friction in the system. So people that are early founders that add to the low, the mother load, the silver yeah. hoard that backs everything 100% business, yeah. as that 
grinds through and there's a spending of the coin, that generates a market, just like the coin market's market. Yeah. That market goes to buy more silver. But as the stockpile, it pays me a reward in silver, but also rewards the system itself. So in theory, you're continuing to build the above ground stockpile of silver over time. So in theory, you can withdraw your own compassion. But it's something that no one else is doing at this point. If enough people took their silver out, bought it, took it off the grid, that inverted pyramid that we're told exists with all the derivative instruments, surely we should make the point that it's balancing on so minute that eventually we can bring it down. Is that something that as advocates we should be asking for, especially libertarian conferences like now? Get your silver, take it out of the grid. Could we enforce the end of this absolute If you could get people out? to do it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Max Kaiser tried. Yeah. Max had a copy of the I'm not saving that game. I have an idea of absolute between us or whatever, but you know, buy silver, take down JP Morgan. In theory, that wouldn't work, but none of the people did it. Yeah. And there's so many people with large hordes of silver that don't even exist. Or it's hypothecated, or we hypothecated, they don't even know. Yeah. And so that's the problem. But your answer is this. If everyone that owned physical silver that believes it yeah. took it and put it in their backyard as an example, yeah. game over. It's done. Yeah. Great. On that note, Dave, thank you so much for your time.